I've seen a little bit of competition myself, sort of between you and Biggie. This is behind the scenes. I don't want to make it ugly, but it's been an awkward, <laughs> passive-aggressive apology <laughs> off, <laughs> which is, is pretty rare. I mean, it only happens, you know, maybe once or twice a year. But you're both apologizing, but secretly <laughs> seething at the other. <laughs> I'm it glad is, it's quite the ballet. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. I was hoping you'd bring it up. We well, have, it's hard not to. You, right. you talk, yeah, they say. They always say there's an elephant in the room. We have a. <laughs> We have an extravaganza planned today for <laughs> college basketball. And it's off to a rough start. <laughs> We're saying goodbye to one of the greats. <laughs> we are. We have uh, <clears throat> Jim And it's Nance. not one of us, believe me. No, 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 no. <laughs> none of us are greats and none of us are saying goodbye. <laughs> Jim Nance, one of our all-time greats, is calling his final college basketball game tonight. National championship between San Diego State and UConn. And uh, I just decided in my head we're going to send him off <laughs> with a bang here. We're going to have some of his great calls. Dave had forwarded us on Friday what Jim Nance thought were his best calls of all time, or the best games he had seen, I guess, in the Final Four. It really was just a long article with some audio attached to it of Jim Nance recounting his years at the Final Four. Now, Jim Nance is a great CBS broadcaster, and he's not retiring, but he's stepping away from college basketball because he's got his young son, Jameson, who's only six, and he says, you know, he needs a dad at home. Now, Late I don't like child. <laughs> <laughs> now, he's in his 60s. Yeah. Jim Nance. I don't um, follow college basketball day to day, week to week. Yeah. Does Nance cover, does he do one game every weekend? I don't think so. During the regular season? No, I think he just does tournament. Just the tournament. Just tournament. And so uh, when Dave, Jim did an interview over the weekend and, and was recounting again his best moments or the things he's seen, because he's been calling the NCAA. He started in the Final Four in 1991, right after Brent Musburger abruptly was fired by CBS, and they put Nance hmm. on. Yeah, that was in 90 was his last game. In fact, Brent Musburger called the 1990 NCAA championship game between Duke and UNLV, and they had fired him before the game. And he called it, and he said, I'm leaving CBS. That hmm. was his last call. And I remember I was in college. I thought it was an April Fool's Day joke because it was April uh. Fool's Day. And because uh, Brett Musburger was a... He was Mr. CBS. He was. And I think they saw that young Jim Nance was going to be great, and they went ahead and hmm. made that move. I, probably a money thing at that time. Any, no matter what. Here comes Jim Nance. He's done a tremendous job for 30-something years, you know. Here, here, this is what leads to the apology off. <laughs> between Passive aggressive apology me. off. That's right. Every day before this program begins, I give Biggie some instruction, and uh, I have to forward him a couple of emails and things like that, just stuff that's breaking that he has to prepare for this program. You don't wing a program like this, all mm -hmm. right? Only one person I know, <laughs> and he's no longer he's living. No longer living. There's a great old radio <laughs> broadcaster that used to wing it, but he's not with us anymore, okay? Mm -hmm. We don't wing it. We can't. There's a grid here. There's a there's a grid yeah. here. All right. Okay. We take a note, young raw broad and podcasters. That's right. That's correct. You can't just go on. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. So there's a lot of behind the scenes. I send it to Biggie. All this stuff. So Biggie, with about 35 minutes to go before this program begins, said, "You never gave me this thing that I need," and I said, "Yeah, I did." <laughs> Because I had, mm -hmm. I had, it was an email that we need that I had forwarded him. And he goes, no. Nope. And I said, yeah, you've got it. And he goes, no. So, all right, we're the, the, escalating. Right, there's, there's tension. There's some tension. And he comes back a few minutes later. He goes, you know what you did to me? He says, you know what you did? You forwarded me all that Jim Nance stuff. Well, that's probably, I'm sure that's true that I accidentally forwarded him the wrong email. That's, oh. on, that's, on, that's my fault. So Biggie, on this email, on this thing that I accidentally forwarded, it had two hours of Jim Nance <laughs> calling games. Well, I had already edited down what we needed and everything, and, and it wasn't even from that. You know, I, I just went and got a few games that are Jim Nance great calls. So Biggie says, 
I took it upon myself. I've been in here, in here wading through all this material and editing it down. And my thought was, he's never taken it upon himself to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> now he's up to his eyeballs in Nance. Now he's up to his eyeballs in Jim Nance. I'm like, are you kidding me? So, And in your mind, Nance has been handled. It had been. I said, well, forget all the work you've just done. <laughs> we need other stuff. <laughs> the other stuff that I, had already, that I had already done. And the other non-Nance stuff. Yeah. And see, I, it's my own fault, too. This is where the apology off comes in. Mm -hmm. When you sent me the instructions with it, yeah. you said, get this one, but I'm going to send you some more. That's right. So when that backup email came in, I thought that was the more. So oh, I was like, I see. Mm -hmm. but that's my fault. Mm -hmm. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. well, let me fault. start wading through this. Yep, that's my fault. Because I didn't. That's right. Because I thought I'd sent you something. I said, a quick, an honest mistake. But, of course, I've let. So then it becomes like. He calls in. He's like, I'm not going to be ready with your usual. He's running stuff. late. He's running behind because I yeah. sent him down a wild goose chase. So I came in. Now I'm bothered by this. You know, I'm, <laughs> I don't like it. And, but it is ultimately my fault. So I come in and Biggie says, I apologize for the communication error. I should have waited for more clarity. And I say, no, I apologize. <laughs> I sent you the wrong item. And Chris Dim, I didn't even realize Chris Dim was taking it in the apology off that was going on, which was passive aggressive for yes. sure. That's how it was. So that's how we started our day behind the eight ball. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I could tell that. Would you guys like to split a Diet Coke? Would that make things better? I think it would. I, I think it would help. I think it would help. I was reminded of a line because we started getting short with each, snippy with each other mm -hmm. before the apologies. And I was reminded of a line from Pulp Fiction. If I'm Kurt, it's because time is of the essence. <laughs> <laughs> it's the wolf. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. They had the brain cleaning scene. <laughs> yep. Why am I back here on brain detail? They accidentally blew somebody's head off in the back of a car. And, and clocks were ticking. <laughs> yes. There were deadlines. By the way, this will mean nothing to you if you haven't seen the movie Pulp Fiction. But the Diesel and I, my pickleball partner and I, were uh, on the way home yesterday from a tournament and it was about an hour and a half drive and recently a good friend who's huge into movies gave us the factoid that pulp fiction which is told out of order it's one of the great movies of the 90s for sure i absolutely love it and we all do and it's told out of order and a friend of ours just told us by the way that whole movie takes place over 48 hour period it's a two-day movie and that's all it is mm. and you think i i've always thought well it's like a week because yeah. but it's told out of order and uh, Diesel wouldn't believe it. He just did not believe it. <laughs> and so, so I went through for him scene by scene by scene how it does take place over two days. It starts at about 7.30 in the morning. And it's, but it's out of order. But it starts on one morning at about mm -hmm. 7.30 in the morning. And it ends two days later, probably at 10 o'clock in the morning. Hmm. So it's really – and so, so I said, so it does take place over two days. And Diesel goes, well, does it really? Because it's really more like 51 hours, isn't it? And I said, <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess. But we were uh -huh. piecing that together yeah. all and all during the drive Each home. one of you thinking the other couldn't possibly be right. <laughs> Correct. And we were uh, – Snip, Passive aggressive snippy, and snippy. Yeah. snippy with each other. <laughs> how uh, how did the tournament go? Uh, better, but okay. we did not medal. Uh, we did not medal, but we lost to the eventual champion, fifteen to thirteen, in a barn burner of a game. It was difficult to say the least. There was it was really big, good competition, and we remember I told you we entered the open division, which was eighteen and up. Correct, and. Uh, our, a friend of ours said, "You guys have just entered. You you're accidentally entered the wrong thing. You're supposed to be over fifty. You're in the senior division. Yeah. yeah. And we said, no. We Where, won't. where's the silverback? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Grouping. <laughs> and I said, no. We intentionally went. We want to take on all comers. And they, and the guy was just like, oh my god, what are you, what are you thinking? But it was good competition. Every game was tight and difficult, and we lost the last. But we finished fifth out of about fifteen teams. Okay. No podium." No, po if we'd won that one, we would have been guaranteed a medal. God, it's another fifth place finish for you in a month. Oh, I know. God. Is it a month or is it like thirty-two days? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and listen to this. No one say it's a month. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, give or take, but you know, listen to this. Some months are twenty-eight days. <laughs> there, I don't know. You you won't remember this probably, but last October, the Diesel and I were in a 
pickleball event in Chapel Hill, and we won it. And the young lady running it was a student at UNC <laughs> Chapel Hill. I, I mean, I think I remember okay. the weekend. Yes. I don't know if you recall me saying she's you know, gorgeous and 25. Well, that went without saying. That's he, how you do. That, right. And her, her mother was there. <laughs> Like, I was talking to her mother and didn't know it. And her mother's mm-hmm. like, yeah, that's my girl. And I was like, oh, okay, all right. <laughs> oh. I see. Okay, I see. And I feel like some old perv, you know. Yeah. Well, this particular tournament that we were in this week was at NC State, which is uh, on the campus, which is, of course, the rival of UNC Chapel Hill. And uh, I happened to see the young lady from Chapel Hill participating in this tournament. Oh, okay. You know, she, she ran the one in Chapel Hill in the fall. She's also a player. And, oh, yeah. And she was playing in that one as well. Okay. So we find ourselves next to each other at the water cooler. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, now, some background here. This young woman who is really attractive and also is a pickleball player, you know. if Listen, if I was 25, I'd be hitting on her if I was in college, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm, I'm not, divorced. Okay. <laughs> but I'm neither of those things. Are you wearing your ring? Yeah. Yes. Your wedding ring? Yes, yes, I, yes. <laughs> and so we're standing there now. We won it. We won the gold back in the fall, and she took pictures and all that kind of stuff. So I'm standing next to her at the water cooler, and I say, do you remember me? And oh. she looked at me and she goes, no. <laughs> oh, brother. Yikes. <laughs> and I don't know why I did it, but I uh. said, look, you took my picture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Does it no. ring a bell now? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. It does not. And she's like backing away from me. Right, right, right. Looking like, around for yeah, like any kind of help. Allies. She, yeah, any kind of help she could get. Mace. Whistle. I, was just, I, was just, I met you in October. And she's just like now oh, basically. Oh, uh-huh, yeah. and she's gone. And Good I, to see you again. Yeah. <laughs> Later, I saw her after the event, I saw her at Sup Dogs when we stopped to okay. eat. And I said, remember me now? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh. you never answered my question. <laughs> I made her terrifically uncomfortable. I could just tell. I was like, "Why yeah. am I choosing this line of questioning to this girl who knows doesn't know me yeah. from Adam?" Of course, you know. And Can then, I buy you a hot dog? Golly. <laughs> and then, see, after that event, they went on. She went on to win some huge thing, like a collegiate pickleball tournament. Oh, really? Oh, geez. Yes, and. Uh, somebody from that term sent me the article on on that like mm-hmm. it had been written up on the internet and i saw i, saw, I read about you <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. every word I said, just, what are you doing what are you saying you know i kept the article <laughs> i have it in my car <laughs> can you come out and sign it <laughs> and now I'm going to go. She's going to run it again in October, and I'm going to be back in that thing in October, and she's going to see me again and go, oh, my God. Well, there's always a chance you'll break a hip before then. There's that. <laughs> you know? We can only hope. We can only hope. For her sake. At least we, you'd, you'd hope that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But my, we had a, a similar situation. Where's the diesel during all these? Does he not hold you back during these sh- awkward social intercourse no, encounters? He's he was just focused on his I picture him focused on his game. You know what he does? You know, so, uh, so between matches, I go and get water and... Just basically sit around. He goes to whoever we might be playing next and watches them to pick up on their tendencies. Yeah. <laughs> he's a he's a scout. He says, "This guy's a tendency to do that. Watch this. Hit it here. You know that guy's got he has a bad mm-hmm. backhand. All these different yeah. things. Because this I, guy's only got a hook for a hand. <laughs> <laughs> he's still pretty good, but <laughs> I sense weakness." <laughs> <laughs> Pay attention to this guy. He's got a hook for a hair. I'll tell you, listen to what I did. I had a real moral dilemma yesterday in that last match that we lost. It was tight. I mean, it was tight. Like the score was like 12 to 11. They were winning. And a guy hit a shot on us that was a beautiful shot. And it to me, it hit the line. Which means which in. in. And Diesel called it out. Diesel will start standing right next to it. And, he, and, and like right as it hit... The two partners on the other side are our opponents. One said to the other, great shot, great shot. And Diesel said, that's wide, that's out. And they both looked directly at me. <laughs> <laughs> and I just stood there. Hi, I'm a liar. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to lie. <laughs> yeah, it was out. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
No, I did the opposite. I said, I turned to the diesel. I said, I think that was on the line. And uh, they both were, they both looked at me like, thank you, thank you. And because it, it was, he was closest to it. But when you're playing it, sometimes you don't, see. but it was on the mm-hmm. line. So, and, and believe me, usually what I do is I didn't see it. A lot of times yeah. I'll do that, but there was no yeah. doubt I saw that one. I mean, it was right on it. At, at what point in pickling world do you get umpires or referees? When you get to the metal rounds in this particular one. Okay. So I've someone only, else would make those calls. Yes. And, well, you know what they do, though? I'll tell you, we had that one time when we were in Charlotte a year ago, which is coming up again. We got to the metal round, and what the guy does is he calls out the score, but you still make your own call. He'll say, like, oh, okay. nine serving four, and he'll point to it. But if you have a, a question, you can, like, if there's a close call, like on that one, we would have looked at him and said, what did you see? Like, he, okay. would, have, he would have made the call on a close. But he, my experience was he always stuck with whatever the person called. You know, okay. if you chat, mm-hmm. he'd be like, I saw it as in, you know. Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, I think it, it, if Diesel did call it out, and if I had stuck with him, that, it's our call because mm-hmm. – it was on our side, but that would have been controversial. And I thought, I don't want to win this way. Mm-hmm, and then, yeah. so they went up on us by two or three and we caught up. And I thought, because I was honest, we're going to win. And then we didn't. So I thought, honesty does not pay off. No, that's right. <laughs> if I had made the wrong call, mm-hmm. we would have won. And instead, uh, look what I did. Yeah. Flipped around. Did they tell you, appreciate your honesty. Yeah. They thanked me. They were like, thank you. Because uh, they knew. I mean, everybody mm-hmm. knew, except Rob. I mean, excuse me. I say Rob, <laughs> the diesel. Except, I mean, he, he didn't, he called it in- incorrectly in my mind. But he's done that to me, too. You quiet know. ride home. <laughs> yeah, it's a long ride home. <laughs> yeah. You just, you had to be honest once, didn't you? <laughs> once in your life, the one time in your life you were honest, my God.